How you doing? I'm Elijah Johnson, and today we have Deshaun, aka Pooh Lawton. Yeah, ready? Yeah, here we go, here we go. Ready? I had to get out of Hollywood, get back to the trenches. They said they need me. Little fish. That phase alone, we all change. You say I change alone. Sleepless night, barely changing clothes. You know, right, you was wrong. I was tired, they didn't realize certain vibes, it don't feel right. Plenty nights, get me from a tough. Why they lie? I do love my guy. You looking crazy, no, the trenches raised me. I'm dirty, yo, what on Chicago, Jay Z. And I was scared how that money made me. I caught a vibe that they was looking crazy Money ran low, right? Fellas can't vote right I can't even vote for what I believe this shit ain't going right I done drop a tear inside the funeral, I ain't more right And I I'm blaming Pooh, Pooh, I'm gonna call you Pooh, I'm not gonna call you the show yeah, I know you, you know what I'm saying, so how, how are you today? That's the first thing we gonna start with How you feeling today? Pretty good Pretty good, I heard you had a basketball game today Yeah We're not gonna talk about that but When you, when you start playing ball? I've been the freshman uh, year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing basketball all my life. All your life? Was yeah. that your first sport? Um, nah, football. It's was. always been football. Yeah. Okay. Um, where you where are you from? North New Jersey. North New Jersey. Southwood. Southwood. That's right. tough. Yeah. That's tough. How was it growing up? Oh man, it was <laughs> tough growing up in that neighborhood because yeah, I seen cool. things that I I wouldn't have wanted to see. Mm-hmm. It was like people getting killed in front of me, shot in the head, mm. like tough. Like growing so, up in that so neighborhood. Yeah, growing up down there, right? Um, so I know you have friends who you grown up with and everything like that. Uh, was it any friends that like got caught up or like? Yeah, it was. And when I was little, I didn't listen. At not like eight nine years old, I was disrespected to my family and all that. Okay, coming to the house. Three in the morning and stuff like mm-hmm. hanging around the wrong group. So, hanging around the, wrong so crowd. the boys that I used to hang with never wanted to follow me. So mm-hmm. every time we get in trouble, they point to me and say I'm mm-hmm. a leader. Uh, so that's how it was. And now they are in the street. I don't mess with them no more. Yeah. Like I'm not cool with them. I don't follow them. Like I don't mess with them. So they what, in the streets now. What what I'm um not. what what or who um. Made you get your head on straight, you know? Yeah. Um, my aunt that passed away last year and my grandmother. Those were my two biggest supporters that got me right. Okay, okay. When did when did um football take a, t- a toll on that? Uh, at nine years old, um, when I played Mighty Might for Jackie Robinson. Yeah, who so, who you start? You said I started. You off, play, I started play? off with Jackie Robinson Bears. Um, yeah, where's where's that located? Um, in Newark? Uh, yeah, Newark. Okay, Adam and Phil, and then. My junior PBA, year, I had another year at Jackie Robinson. Then my junior PBA, year, my second junior PBA, year, I went to Brick City, but they ain't signed off on a waiver, mm-hmm. so I was just on the roster. I couldn't play that year. Okay. Then PBA, year, I was my first year, like officially playing with Brick City. So you're, you're somewhat of like a Brick City legend. You know? There's, some, <laughs> yeah. like, there's a lot of little kids that look up to you. From how was it playing with Brick City? You played with Big Body Nas and all of them over there. Um, like Brick City was the best program going up. I beat Brick City mighty my year, seven zip. Oh, for real? Yeah. <laughs> what what was on one it. of your favorite moments playing for Brick City? Um <laughs> probably Pee Wee yeah. When we went to that when we went to the national championship. Uh Florida. that's in Florida? Yeah. Did so, you guys win? Uh we lost about ten that year. Who who was on that team? Um it was it was a lot of like dogs on that team. Like they're doing their thing now in that, high school. Like one one is is Odie. Okay. Abdul Sayed so yeah, Abdul Salam mm-hmm. from Union City. Mm-hmm. Another one was Derek Whitehead. Okay, big okay. Time basketball player now. Um, cool. Um, Jordan Campbell was another okay, one. Campbell. Jordan Campbell was another hitter on that team. It was um, by Kerry Cleveland. He played for University basketball team now. It's a okay. couple of. It was a couple of heavy hitters on that team. 
Word, word, word. So, so were you a part of that Silk City rivalry or or Yeah, I was a part of that. Because when we talked to DJ, he said that um that oh, he said Brick City was scared to play yeah, them. I don't know City if that was nah, your play, year, but I, I think nah. it was fourteen U we, I, he was talking about. We played them that game. Well Corey. I played against a Corey in them. Okay. Okay. It was a Corey, the kid um choir from um DePaul, mm-hmm. the Lama. I played against them with the Rick in them. Okay. okay. And we beat them twenty one seven at and that turn mm, okay so that was my first that was my first time getting to play six city yeah, okay that's what's up so now you said um it was tough you know growing up in newark and um I, and I, we all know that that's a tough place to grow yeah, up definitely. um a- along with your family members that kept your head on straight what kind of what kind of role did football play for you you know like what did what what avenues did you take with football like what did that, did that make you like Concentrate more in this, in school or like you know. Um, football definitely played a part because in my neighborhood, where you grow up at is either you play sports or statistic mm-hmm. in the streets. Yeah. You either, either end up in jail or dead. Yeah, and it's only it's, it's all you know. So it's like either you gonna choose one sports or the streets. It's like like so I chose sports because I love football growing up. I used to play in the streets. So with, at like street football at, and all that. At like what specific age was you like, this is gonna be this is what I'm this is what I fell in love with. This is what is gonna take me out of where the environment I am in and everything. What age? Like at probably eleven. Eleven? Yeah, yes. Where I was playing receiver and I was scoring a lot of touchdowns and I'm like, this is gonna feel be my good. sport. Yeah. 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 Great. <laughs> like, yeah, this is going to be my sport. Like, I love it. So, Which, was you playing basketball at the same time? My fault, bro. Yeah, I played basketball. Matter of fact, I started playing basketball sixth grade, yeah. Mm. Six, okay. And everybody kept saying, you got that grit. Like, you, know football. Get, mm-hmm. you got that grit. So, you was getting rebounds a little too. Yeah, I was getting mm-hmm. rebounds and aggressive yeah, and all yeah, that. Going to the court. lane and all that. Like, just take one dribble, go to the lane yeah. and get, get to a bucket. <laughs> so, it was like, yeah. So, that's when I start. I was coming along in basketball. Everybody thought I was going to choose basketball going into high school. Mm-hmm. Like, it was um, coaches and all that like, come to me like, why you don't play basketball no more? This, that. I'm like, nah, that's not my sport. Mm-hmm. Football, everybody thought it was going to be basketball, though. Like, now, it wasn't. Now, with football, what what position, because we know you play both you play both sides both of the sides. ball. What uh, position made you really fall in love with the sport? Like, what's your position? Because right now you're an athlete. You know, you could like, be anywhere right now. But if you had to choose, DB. what would you play? DB? DB, DB yeah. I was thinking it, DB. It was so, to get it clear, you play wide receiver I and played safety, wide receiver right? my first year. You play wide receiver and safety, though, now, right? Yeah, on um, DB. Oh, oh play, DB. DB. Corner, safety. Well, corner, safety. Corner, yeah, it's the same. Safety. Okay. Okay. Rotate. Yeah, okay. I played the safety position, too. Mm-hmm. Last year, my sophomore year. Right. But I played. I could play the free safety position. With I okay. was playing it when I, my first year getting to Westside. With in seven on seven, I was playing it, ro- um, rolling down into okay. the flats and all that. That's when they put me at the strong okay. Apache, mm-hmm. which you know, Honey Badger play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was DB because growing up, I had to go against Derek Whitehead. Like okay. that was a tough time. Like he, Derek Whitehead got me where I'm at today. Like he skill level and yes, everything. going going at him, like in practice, mm-hmm. we go at it every time. I'm matched up on him. Well, it is. Scout offense, or uh, regular offense versus okay. scout D. Yeah, I was on him, and they put me on him every time. Whether he was at tight end or anything, and then even when we go to camps and stuff, I was on him. So okay. it was like he really made me into the who I am today. And it was like I'm like if I could guard this kid, I could guard anybody. Of course, Iron Sharp so, Iron. Yes. Yeah. So it was like guarding Derek made me believe I could guard anybody. And like if Derek was to play football. Like he'll be a five star talent too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I, I was gonna ask. He plays bas- Where does he play basketball at? At Montverde, number okay. one team in the nation. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if he was to play um football and basketball, he would have probably been at IMG. Like he okay, could have played wow. he could have played wide right receiver at IMG. Up. Like that's the type he of talent. He was that good. He was that good. Like okay. five star receiver at thirteen. And that one hand catch that he had was at like eleven years old. So mm-hmm. Derek is always younger than us. Like Derek is sixteen years old right now. Okay. Ooh. As a junior. Nobody know that Tariq is young, so so yeah, yeah. Sure. going to get some. So um, you 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 were highly touted coming out of out of out of eighth grade and um with Brick City and things. You chose to go to West Side. What came down to that decision, and what other schools were you thinking about going to? It was more for freshman year. More, more I'm sorry, yeah, more you did freshman go to more year. first. More, you transferred out. 
Well, it came down to what it was was you know you got to take that test to mm-hmm. test on mm-hmm. to get into Catholic school, yeah. mm-hmm. and it's like was was you gonna help me pay help me Stay with financial school. aid yeah, yeah, yeah. or something, or was you going not? So it was like. It's coming down to the last minute. I probably would have been at Westside my freshman year too, though. So it was coming down to the last minute. Mm-hmm. And Moore gave me a full scholarship. So I was like, might as well take it probably just for one year. Mm-hmm. And they, Coach Keevan was all, always telling me, just try it for one year. See how you like it. So then I did it for one year. I dominated that conference. It was too easy. Like, I you played like, varsity? Your yes, year? I played varsity freshman year. Like I was too, It was too easy freshman year. Who, who did you guys play? We play like, um, like team like Holy Trinity teams from like South um, oh, okay, yeah. down like no, not really <laughs> big time schools. Yeah, yeah, not like nobody. yeah, not like we are probably scrimmage a couple of t- tough schools like okay. like like Canarsie and all them, but it wasn't mm-hmm. no big time schools yeah, yeah, that yeah. we was playing like um Curtis and all them E Hall. We wasn't playing them type of schools, mm-hmm. and I didn't know that until I really got into on the island to see who was the best schools and all that. Okay. And everybody kept saying Curtis, Curtis. And I kept looking into Curtis to see where, uh, who was Curtis. Mm-hmm. They had a couple of big time ballers coming out of there, so I was. So that that came down to that, and it was like either I'm gonna stay in Newark, uh, but my thing was to go to Catholic, and I could have still sophomore yeah I could have still went Catholic, but it's like where I come from. I believe I could make it. You can make it out of public school. Out of public school, right? yes. I don't believe in. And Westside got a good. Yes, organization I don't, going I don't on believe it. I don't believe in a private, and that's that's one reason I didn't go private. Mm. So that's why I came back home. Yeah. I said I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay home. So you started. So you, your your new coach was Coach Bell. How how is that? Um, he's <laughs> that that's a great man. His his coaching style is. Right, and coach. He brought. It, it felt like he brought an all star nah. team to Westside. I ain't gonna lie. Coach Bell treated me like his own. Like he treat me like his own. Right. Like I, I definitely went to Westside because training, training one. Is the coaching DG. totally different? Yeah, what way different. Do? Way different. Stricter, or more aggressive, more stricter, more hard working. Like we, it's so, more hard working. It's, 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 it's more strict. It's, it's the, it's the no program, strict. yes, mm-hmm. and it's the program like he built okay. at Westside. So it's like, like he treat me as his own. He come get me from practice, take me to workouts. Like treat me like right. JB, oh, yeah. so it's like he always calling me. Like he gave me, he brought me the sled. Like, like you do that, you do this, do this. Give me protein shakes, all that. Like he take care of you guys. Yes, take it. care of me. Sure. Yes, and so it's like the the work ethic between them and more. It was like, <laughs> dang, like more. We didn't run the hills. We run hills, mm. like, and we increase them like every every week. Mm. We go up probably at ten or fifteen here. Yeah? 15 more hills, like 60, 75 hills. Like last year, playoffs, we got to 75 hills, Rainbow Bowl game. Hmm. We had to run that, that week on Monday. So it's like. Yeah. Wait, after y'all lost or nah, before the game? Before. Oh, okay, before okay. That weekend of Rainbow Bowl week, we ran 75 hills. Hmm. Like up and down. Like, Fatigue was not going to be a factor. Well, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So it's like. So, and still to this day, even COVID going on, we still ran hills. Like y'all, every week. So y'all working out right now? Cool. Right now, I am. Yeah, we are. Oh, LA Fitness. Team? Yeah, we got a membership. Okay. For LA Fitness. Oh, that's what's up. So for a year, so mm. we working out. We working out Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, four to six. Do you guys have like a personal trainer that's in there? Oh um, yeah. You guys? We got um old man. He played big time football at UConn, okay. and then we got Kells, well, not O line coach, okay. but he basically the strength and conditioning coach. Mm-hmm. With O, but O got many things to like handle right now. All right. Since he, he got twins on the way, so it's like cows we got in like sections, groups, do that, do that. But yeah. Now when I first met you, I, I think it was probably the first time he met you too. Um you came to one of our, our first camps. Um mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about you when I first seen um when I first saw you. I didn't know you, but I could hear you. You know, <laughs> I was like, "Who is this kid? He's just talking like crazy, but he's backing up and everything he's that he's saying. For like, sure. he was he, definitely like he would him, make a play and tell you that he made a play, and he's gonna come back and do it again. Where did you get that confidence to, like, you know, to like back up? Not only t- tell you tell a person what you're gonna do, swagger, but do it. You yeah, know, yeah. big body, mm-hmm. big body nods. Mm-hmm. 
he gave me that he gave me that grit. I ain't gonna lie. He gave me he put that dog into me. He also played a role in my life too. Mm-hmm. Um, when me changing my life, mm-hmm. get me on track. All he right. also did. It was a couple of times where I stayed at his house when okay. he got me to. Right. He that's got me sad. on track when that, that's for, that's probably like the second year at Brick City. You always need really role st- models like that. Yeah, so like he got me on track. Um, but Big Body give me that grit. Mm-hmm. Like, like I ain't gonna lie. We seven on seven. Anybody, he don't care four fives dirt. Um, receivers here tell me, and they here tell me if you want to earn your money, this is we gonna stick. And I say, bro, I stick anybody. I'm not bragging down from nobody. Out. And that's another thing we want to talk about. I feel like you're one of the most underrated players in Jersey. You, sure. you, you, your stats are are matched up to some people that that hold all um all state positions or going to Stanford or going you know different places. And I feel like you're not being recognized. How do you how do you feel about that being like having that chip on your shoulder? How do you carry that? It's frustrating, bro. Like I just don't know what college is. Look at it. like it's frustrating. Everybody say size this, height this, weight this. I say, look at Devontae Smith, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's probably not 170. He's probably 155 soaking wet. Right. Looking at him. Like, it's like he told everybody as his Heisman, as a Heisman winner. Like, everybody told him he wasn't going to be this. He wasn't going to be that because his size is too small. And he proved everybody wrong. I, I do the same. Like, I still grind. I leave all that to God's in God's hands. Mm-hmm. Like. Because you know you're putting in that work. Yes, I know I'm putting in the work. So I know something's going to come. And that's what Bell tell me every day. Trust the process and stay patient. So I stay patient. I don't say nothing about it. It's frustrating. It's very frustrating dealing with it. Like knowing that I'm a junior with no offers. Then I look at other kids. Other kids with offers. Now, compare, I compare. I look at their game. from, mm-hmm. and I look at mine's and I'm like, this kid. And right, then, yeah. it's like, and then, then it's like the kids that you see with offers. When you finally see them play, like how this kid got this off, how right. this kid got this off, so it's crazy it just, because even on your, your your squad, y'all got mad overs coming through there. Exactly, it's and crazy it was like how they're overlooking you. It was like yeah, it was like COVID messed everything up too. Cause I think without without COVID, I would have had Penn State. I would have had them offers already. Cause Penn State's still on the list right now, mm-hmm. and what I was planning on doing if COVID didn't come in play. Was going to a game, Penn State game, Boston College game. Of course. Um, Oklahoma and Bell are supposed to came down to see, seeing me and the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And I never knew that. Bell told me that in the car. He said, Oklahoma and Bell are supposed to came down to see y'all play. They was going to send somebody down to see y'all play. So COVID came playing. It's like, mm-hmm. knock everything off. And he was telling me, he was like, yeah. West Virginia, too. They came into the school that, and they was like, Gerard and he was like, um, he, he said he coming back in the off season, okay, to see Nook throw and me work Next out in the year spring. Should be totally different though. So Next yeah, that's what then, I'm saying. Yeah. With that, but what what it is, I think as stuff going slowly right now, with everything opening back up, me going on visits, school seeing me, and it'll be better. He said, yeah, he said. Bell said was concerned a lot of schools at the weight and the height. So it's like I'm not worried about the weight if I'm. I'm five ten and a half, five eleven. So, and I hit my growth spurt yet. Yeah, my father six one, size thirteen. I wear size twelve, and I didn't. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. It's you coming. Yeah. Size 12 I wear you. size twelve. My father wears size thirteen. He yeah, six one. Yeah. My uncle. I fear my uncle a lot though. He's six two. So, Freshman year yeah. of college, you probably hit that. Yeah, that's what I think. And you shouldn't. And, and and it's it's good to be frustrated. You should use that as fuel. You know, yeah, like, yeah like, that, that, like, that's sure. you should have like that should be you know keep track of everything. You know, use that as fuel to to get to the exactly. next level. And, and when you get there, just don't quit. You know, just exactly. keep going and going and that's exactly everybody. What told me he said yeah. he said just when you get there, if you're not playing freshman year, I said it don't matter. My project, my thing is to get to the lead, bro. Like I'm gonna make it, well. Mm-hmm. I got anything, like anything, not gonna stop me from making it. Right, right. right. Well, we appreciate you having um, coming on our podcast, the fourth episode in the Zone podcast. Again, I'm Brandon Davis, Elijah Johnson, my son Pooh. <laughs> Pooh. <laughs> appreciate anything you, else? bro. Appreciate nah, you. Nah, that's it, Brody. Appreciate you for coming on the show. No man. problem.